from 1994. This console would have cost about £39,000 in 1994. This has 32 strips and the full Bantam patch bay. This will give you 64 inputs, 12 auxiliary sends. This is the key. Dynamic gate processor, DSP. Gates and compressors on every channel. Really fantastic gates, very fast and very usable compressor. Also it's got some pan and various, uh, I think there's an oscillator on there as well to do modulation. You can save those gates and compressor settings. I'll move down to the channel, or the I.O. module as they call it, which is the input output, because this is an inline desk as opposed to a split. Now at the top we've got a mic line gain, a mic line switch, phantom 48 volts, and a tape gain which would be your mix B or your multi-track returns. Meter direct, that switches between the line or the multi-track return on the meter. EQ, look at that EQ there. Two mid sweeps there and two Qs, MF1, MF2, high and low shelf, very comprehensive. EQ in and out. This is the EQ for the uh, monitor or the mix B or multi-track return, it's all the same thing. High and low, but you can take some of the mids off the um, line input with that switch there. So you can share the EQ between the two inputs. The dynamics I pointed out over there, that's the in-out switch there to bring the dynamics in. It's just on the actual channel, not on the monitors. Moving down, we've got the auxiliary sends, the auxiliary buses as they're called, 12 of two stereo pairs, four monos there, five, six, seven, eight. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then to get to the nine, you hit that button down there, 10, 11, 12. So they have the dual busing there. So it's 12 auxiliary sends. You can have these pre or post. You can have them monitor or line input with these switches. 24 track that actually sends the it to the buses 24 tape buses that's for extra aux sends if you need that that's, I think they use that in theatres and places like that not so much in the studio moving down we have the big fader that I mentioned here 100 mil fader and um, obviously we've got mute on and off we've got solo and we've got the pan here that's on the line input and sit on the line input, we've got the bus assigned. So these are the assigns to the multi-track outputs, or tape sends. There's actually 24 buses, but they're across 12 switches, or six switches, which are panable. So if you want to go to track one, you hit that down, pan to the left. Track two will be going to the right, and so on, up to 12. And if you hit that switch there, you come on to plus 12. So that would be 13, and to the right would be 14 and so on up to 24 so the 23 24 Hope that makes sense <laughs> so 12 buses oh it's 24 bus across six switches which are obviously dual pan left or right uh, reverse button that flips the inputs over and as does mix so you can basically bring the signal in either on the big fader or the small fader depending on where you are in the process of recording and remixing um, solo, this, sorry, moving up to the monitor input, which is the lighter grey section. If you want to hear multi track return, you hit the tape button down, and there's the level to mix here. Got the pan, obviously, solo again, and mute. So we have the whole section here. As I said, they're called IO modules, input output, because this is an inline console. I'll just go back to the centre section. The 12 auxiliary masters here, we have, obviously these will be sending out, if you look on the patch bay, you've literally got the 12 outputs there, they are normalised through to the 12 feeds on the back of the desk via the EDAX, and they'll be going to your um, things like gates, reverbs, and so on. 
Uh, back to the centre section, small oscillator on board there, various frequencies, various assignments. You can send it direct to the patch bay, to the auxiliaries or to the groups. The old days they used to send tone to the multi-track. That's the idea behind that. Little um, section here, talk back, which again there's your gain, there's your mic. And we've got a talk switch here. You can assign that to the studio direct out which is the patch bay auxiliaries again or the groups so that's talk back for the, to list to uh, talk to the musicians now on the section here we've got the studio and this would literally be the studio where the musicians are there's the gain there's the assign button so that will send the mix to the studio we've got four two track returns which are you know CD player returns to externals that's just the extra inputs or we can send to the auxiliaries one or two, three and four. So that's the studio feed. We can send all that lot to the musicians in the studio if that's wired up to them. Up here we've got the a listen mic, which is basically a mic that just is a solo mic that comes in. I believe you can hang that in the studio and sort of um, listen to the musicians rabbiting on about whatever they should be rabbiting on about. Uh, in place solo. Uh, if you're familiar with this, normally a solo is straight down the middle, mono, uh, but this basically allows you to create a, st a stereo solo. So if I've had it in, in place solo and hit the solo button there, you'd actually be able to pan that signal. So you want a pair of hi-hats or something and you want to get them just in a certain place, that's the idea behind that. As you can see, that's muted everything else. So you have to be careful, uh, depending on what process you are, if you're in record, you have to watch out for that because it will actually kill the uh, sends to the multitrack. A bit complicated, I won't go into that, but I think if you know what they are, then you know what they do. The control room here, again, similar to the studio, you can assign, obviously, the left-right mix, which is on the big fader here. And two track A, B, C and D as usual, or external inputs. So six returns, basically. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, or you can monitor or listen to the auxiliaries one and two, three and four. That would be to get fold back um, for the musicians so you can hear what they are going to hear basically. So you can set up a fold back mix with these buttons here. Solo level, that's to adjust the solo against the main control rooms. Headphones, there are two headphone outputs there and they're controlled with this pot here. Alternate output level, right we've got three sets of speakers on this console. We've got the big pot here which is the main A's. If we hit B that would be going to speaker B. If we leave that down and go to speaker C that's the third set and then you've got this alt output level so you can match the level of the three different speakers so you get them all the same loudness as such. There's a mute there for muting the control room. Put that back on there. Uh, other features here we've got a dim switch so it's just in case the phone goes you can put that down. That was that listen mic I mentioned earlier and talk back button as I mentioned. Now these desks have or had an automation system which is this center section keyboard here but I don't sell the desk with this track mix as it was called. Uh, it's pretty old now and uh, I can't basically repair them and there's no software backup so I don't normally sell the automation. So there we go. Oh well, let's just quickly go through the patch bay. Sorry. Um, if you're familiar with patch bays we've got the line in there, the monitor in, which is the tape B I mentioned here, that would be your monitor in. You've got inserts obviously for things like compressors and gates, the group out so you can basically intercept the group out. It would normally find its way to the multi-track send which is here, tape send, tape return back from the multi-track so you can get in anywhere basically on the process intercepts. That's the idea of a patch bay. The idea being that you have all of your ins and outs in the control room, gates, compressors, reverbs, etc., all coming up on your tie lines, and then you can literally patch between the ins and the outs as like a telephone exchange, really. And uh, just makes it really convenient. You don't have to be diving behind the desk. Uh, also available are the of the, the left and right mix inserts. There's actually, you can uh, intercept the left and right mix there. Uh, oscillator, that's useful. That's the, when I mentioned oscillator direct over there, that will come out here as will the talk back. So you can use that for testing purposes. Um, two track returns, as I mentioned, A, B, C, and D, and the externals there, so there'll be CD players. 
uh, and send so you can basically make copies between machines parallels that's useful for doubling up signals studio outs so that's the studio feed to the musicians uh, intercept that if you like the tie lines are said is all the effects outboard will all come up there you'd label that up and know what, what you're doing they all end, um, terminate on what they call EDAC connectors, which are at the back here. Quite a setup, really, on this particular desk. Well, all the jades, I think there's about 16 of them. Got your mic inputs here, 1 to 32. Your line inputs, 1 to 32. The multi-track, 1 to 32. The way these are wired, the first eight are sends to the multi-track, and the second eight are returns. So, send 1 to 8, return 1 to 8, 916, and so forth up to 32. There's 24 buses, you can bring 20, 32 tape returns back on the monitor, but obviously there's only 24 buses. This is the basically the amp feeds, which is going to be going to your A, B and C control rooms and your studio. Two track sends and returns, wired opposite to these, the, the first eight are the returns from the two tracks and the second eight are the sends. Why they did that I don't know, but there we go. Auxiliaries 1 to 12, straight down. These are wired up basically the top line is the grounds and then the first pair is going to be balanced obviously everything's balanced on this desk that's going to be hot and cold miss one hot and cold so it's one two three four five six seven eight you drop down and you pick up on the last four well you've got a, a row of earths on the fifth row up sorry row of grounds again that's going to be nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen so sixteen basically um, runs on this particular EDAC. So they're all wired as 16. So you can interchange them. Say you had some um, line inputs and you wanted to put those on the multi-track, no problem. They're all interchangeable. Tie lines I mentioned, 96 there, so there's plenty of um, holes there for you to bring all your gates, compressors and so forth. This stuff here is just the old uh, auxiliary, the um, automation track mix, which I said I don't sell with the desk anymore. There's a nice big grand bus there, bus bar. That's for if you've got a lot of stuff going on externally to the desk. Sometimes you have to get into star earthing and stuff like that. That's that listen mic I mentioned so it's, uh, for listening to people in the studio. Again, this was all to do with the automation, so we won't go into that. Um, look at that power supply down there. That's about 300, 400 watts, I think. Quite a beast. And the legs are pretty serious about 30 kilos each the whole thing weighs about 250 kilos so it's a good four man lift on the flat uh, and plenty of fun going through doorways what else do I need to show you um, there's a phase meter on there and a solo meter there fabulous desk these normally sell for around five thousand pounds and of course come with the studio systems guarantee and technical backup for the life you have the console so, I hope you enjoyed that. Soundtracks Jade. Best greetings from Cornwall. See you later. Thanks for listening.